So the presentation today is from um, Vladimir Elistotov, you can correct your surname for me later, who's the developer of the Blender OSM, OSM add-on. He lives in Russia in the coastal Black Sea city of Sochi, which I discovered is in what's called the Caucasian Riviera. Um, he lives there with his wife and they have a nine month old daughter, so congratulations. We had some trouble with our video and audio when we did some tests, so that's why we're on a different channel. Uh, although Vladimir was educated as a physicist, he's been working a lot with OpenStreetMaps, uh, first as a hobby since 2008, and later working professionally with OpenStreetMaps in web-based GIS systems. And since 2016, Vladimir has worked full-time on the add-on Blender OSM, which brings all the greatness of OpenStreetMaps into the Blender package. So the ultimate goal of the Allen is to generate an environment and blend it out of OpenStreetMap data as realistically as possible. Um, and part of the talk today will be dedicated also to the textual descriptions of uh, building styles. Uh, since Vladimir has found a way to earn some money from this uh, add-on, he also gives some money back, supporting the Blender project as a gold sponsor and as a member of the OpenStreetMaps Foundation. Uh, so today, Vladimir will tell us all about his work with the add-on and maybe give us some tips on how to make a living working on FOSS projects. Is there anything else you'd like to share, Vladimir? You can turn on your camera and take the stage if you'd like. I'd like to greet every, everyone. Thank you very much for joining the meetup. Thank you, Duncan in, and Ioannis for organizing the meetup. Okay, now I'm sharing the screen and proceed to the presentation. So I'm going to present the Blender add-on called Blender Awesome I'm working on and to present what is possible now and what will be possible in the coming month. I think we are working on exciting things. As Duncan already mentioned, the, the ultimate goal is to import open street map data in 3D as realistically as possible. I'd like to know that all source code of the Blender Awesome Edon is open source and is hosted on GitHub. And the actual development and all discussions related to development is are done on the following repository. It's github.com architecture blossom. And some facts about the Edon. As Duncan already mentioned, it started in September 2016, and it exists it existed as a simple script since 2014. There are 80,000 downloads, and two developers, including me, who are working on the Edon. It has five stars rating at gumroad.com. And about funding. There's a premium version available at gumroad.com with textures and building styles. So the sales of this premium version permits us to develop the add-on. Now to the features of the add-on. The very basic feature is import of built-in volumes. I think it's the right time to describe what OpenStreetMap is, what to expect from it, what not to expect. OpenStreetMap is a community project, is a wiki-like world map where everyone can contribute. So I'll show how it works. So one zooms to a specific place in the world, press the button edit. If you are not registered in the opposite web, you will be offered to register and an interactive tutorial will be offered. So I'm pressing edit. Zoom a bit further. I press area 
to trace down a building and start editing it, editing. Okay, I press the button Q to make the angles 90 degrees. Okay, then I choose this building. It's a private house. I don't know how many levels it has, but I know that it has a hip roof. So there's a specific tag for this attribute. Like roof. Shape. And that's all. I press save. Comment, press upload. And that's it. It's quite actually quite easy to start editing the open street map. So now back to the our presentation. A few words about the data, the data model of OpenStreetMap. So there are contours of buildings, and each contour has some tags attached to it. For example, this contour has address tags like house number, street. Then it has a tag that specifies that it's a building, and in particular, it's school. Number of levels is very important tag to produce a th correct 3D representation of the building, and some other tags. And this simple data model enables some kind of 3D mapping in OpenStreetMap. So suppose we have a building composed of uh, two volumes. The lower volume is a has flat roof and the upper volume the red one on the image has pyramidal roof so first we specify the footprint for the whole building it has a rectangular form and we set the text that's a building and it has totally six levels then we specify the footprint for each part so there, maybe you can see the green outline. It coincides with the outline for the whole building. And we set the text for this part. So it's building part, a specific tag. Then it, this building part has three levels and it has a flat roof shape. And in the, the same way we specify the text for the upper part. We draw it the shape of this part and set the text for it. It's building part. So we set that it starts from the level three and finish on the level six and the roof shape pyramidal. And that's how 3D mapping works in OpenStreetMap. So we can see quite a lot of roof shapes are supported by the add-on. But only a small percent of all buildings available in OpenStreetMap has such detailed specification. Typically, we have only a building footprint and perhaps an address. No text that allows correct 3D reconstruction of the building. Also, I'd like to know that they don't is capable of generating complex heaped roofs. The, we outsource the library, make it independent of the Dawn and of Blender. It's available in a separate repo. And this library is capable of generating 
nearly 100% of all heaped roofs available in OpenStreetMap. There are currently available more than 300,000 heaped roofs in OpenStreetMap. Also, they don't can import SRTM terrain and project satellite imagery on it. So that's the feature of the premium version. There are some facade textures provided with it. And it, they don't can generate an environment and project the textures on the generated buildings. And the same with uh, in the late evening setting. So, so one more feature, they don't can import forests and uh, place them on, on the correct, and place the forests on the correct place on the terrain. And this is the recent feature. It was added very recently, it's asset package editor. It allows setting custom textures. So we specify how many the, the custom texture should be tileable and seamless. So we specify how many tiles horizontally, how many tiles vertically, and we then pick up a feature on the texture, for example, a window, and specify how many the width of the feature in meters and the width of the feature in pixels. And those attributes allows to placing the texture correctly on a building. And basically that's all about the current features of the OpenStreetMap add-on. And now I'd like to proceed to the ongoing development. To generate the buildings, the buildings, the cities and towns as realistically as possible, it's required to have some kind of describing the look and feel of buildings. And we proposed inscription language for, bu for building style to generate realistic buildings. We call this description language architecture markup language or the abbreviation PML. I'll describe the concept of PML on the following simple example. Suppose we have a building with a gabled roof. Let's suppose we have a facade and the facade, have, and the facade has only similar windows, only the same windows. So everything starts from the building footprint. Let's assume that the building footprint is rectangular in this case. So we specify that we have four floors or four levels. We have a gabled roof. The level height of the ground level is four meters and the, the height of the other levels is three meters. Also, we specify that the height of the roof is five meters. There are two levels, two roof levels, and the height of the first of the roof levels is 2.8 meters. Then we specify the cladding material for the building walls is plaster. The cladding color is light gray. So if we specify these attributes in the for the footprint, they will be propagated and inherited by all the other elements of the building, like facades and other elements and other elements generated during the building um, generated for the building. We also specify the attributes for the roof, the cladding material for the roof, roof tiles. The, the color for the cladding dark red and additional attribute is cladding, cladding glass. 
it's needed to specify that we have a specific type of roof tiles. In our case, it's circular roof tiles. So if we wouldn't have this class, this attribute, then they don't pick up an arbitrary texture with roof tiles. So the addon generates a building volume based on this style element for the footprint. It contains the facades, the front facade, the side facades, and the a facade is under, should be understood in the extended sense. It contains also the roof side. So a facade may contain levels. A roof side may also contain levels. So that's the case for our example. A facade contains levels, the first level, uh, the ground level, the first level, the second, and the third one. And the same true for the roof side. There is uh, the first roof level and the second roof level. So we continue to specify how our levels look like. So we assume that all building level, except the roof levels are the same, look the same. So it's enough to specify the look and feel for the level only once. But the roof levels look differently. So we need to specify the look and feel of the roof levels uh, for each of them. So let's see how the, the specification for the levels look like. Here's the, specific, the specification for the level on the building wall, on the building wall. So we use the close markup and specify that each level contains a window. Later, they don't will, uh, will place as many windows as the space allows. And there are additional attributes, class for the level and class for the window. So I need to explain the meaning of this uh, of this feature. Uh, a facade can be generated using a single face and the texture applied to it. Alternatively, the facade can be generated using a, deta a detailed 3D model of each building. So the attribute class specifies the solution, gives the solution for either of the of those cases. So if a class, if a user needs a simple representation of the facade, so we have only one uh, face with the texture, then they don't look, will look up a texture with a given class. And the class, and the class is specified in their asset package editor I mentioned before. So he, he, they don't will pick up a texture for the 19th century. Without this class, they don't will pick up a random a texture for a building facade. And the same true for the window. Suppose a user needs a detailed representation of the facade with 3D models of each window. They don't will look up 3D models of windows and will use the model of the window of the 19th century with uh, two panes uh, horizontally and two panes vertically. Again, without this attribute, they don't will pick up an arbitrary window model. So I think it's the meaning should be clear of the attribute class. Okay, let's proceed to the roof level. A roof level with index zero. 
Here we have domers. So we again use the closure markup and specify what is located in the first roof level. So it's enough to set to, to specify the domer once, and they don't will distribute, will place as many dormers as the space allows. So we specify that the dormer have a gabled roof. It has a height 1.5, starting from the lowest point of the dormer, the roof height 0 0.7. And again, we use the closure markup to specify how the front face of the and Dorma looks like it has a round window. Again, we use the attribute class. Uh, they don't will look up all 3D models of the windows and pick up a round window with two panes horizontally and two panes vertically. And in the same, in a similar way, we describe the second roof level. Again, it has a roof shaped gabled, the height 0 0.7, the roof height is equal to the height 0 0.7. And again, we use uh, the markup closure to specify uh, how the front face of the dorma looks like. And remember that we we set the cladding material and the cladding color, the cladding color in the footprint building, uh, in the footprint uh, style element. Uh, those cladding materials and cladding colors will be propag propagated and inherited by the all other elements generated for the building. So the side faces of the dorma will use the, the cladding color and cladding material set in the footprint building element. So I will use a very, a very simple example to show how the concept of um, markup of PML architecture markup language works. But we developed a PML to Python translator. It generates a Python from uh, the PML, and it looks like it's shown on the on the screen. The PML uh, language is translated to Python structures. So the PML is already used by the by the OpenStreetMap add-on, and I'll show an example. This is an example of a PML file describing a building style for a high-rise building. Uh, it looks, uh, I think it's much more complicated than the one I used in the simple example. So we pick up the number of levels from that attribute, from the OpenStreetMap attribute building levels. If it's not given, the number of levels is generated randomly. So it will have, the building will have four floors with a relative weight 10 or five floors with a relative weight 40 and six floors with relative weight 10. And 
in the same way for the other attributes. For example, the building color will be, we try to pick up the building color from the OSM attribute building color. If it's not given, it will be generated randomly. If the cladding material is set to brick, um, the cladding color will be used, will be chosen randomly from the given colors. If the cladding, if the cladding material is set to plaster, the other colors will be used and so on. Now back to our slides. Here I forgot to mention important thing. So here we have facade and the round brackets we have item dot site. It means that this Styling rule is applied only for site, for site facade. And item refers to the current uh, element. In this case, in our case, it's facade. So the question is how to calculate if the if a building facade is a front one, a side one, or a back one. And we are spending we have been spending considerable time to to classify facades and we are close to solve this issue so for each building footprint we calculate if the related facade is facing a major street then is classified as a front one if it's otherwise the neighbor of the front facade and it's classified as a side one and if it's neither front one and nor the side one then it's classified as a back facade so here on the example the green color is used for the front facades the yellow color is used for side facades and the red color is used for back facades and so you could you can notice that it represents the facade classification in real life quite correctly. And the next feature we're working on is detection of curry facades. The curry facades needs to be processed and generated separately from the ordinary facades with sharp angles. So we also detecting curve facets and they will be uh, processed in a separate way. And I should have shown how the redone works. Now it's quite simple. Once the done installed, we press the button select. Every page is open to select an area. So for example, we need San Francisco. Press show selection rectangle. Press copy. Then back to the done. Press past the coordinates are passed to the fields. And basically that's all. We can hit the import button. I will skip the process of importing this open state map, this, this open state map area and show the imported result. This is an area in San Francisco. It's already mentioned, they don't already use the PML files to describe which, which textures to map to a specific building, if it will be a 
texture for office buildings or for apartments buildings. Also, we're trying to detect features, uh, some features on the building footprint. That's needed to generate a more realistic building representation. For example, this is a footprint for a Catholic cathedral. So when we're trying to detect the small features, uh, decoration elements for this cathedral. And basically, that's all that I wanted to present now. And now the links. Where to get the don we distribute the don on the site gumroad.com. Um, this uh, platform, gumroad.com, is used to distribute digital products. So the base version can be downloaded using the link. Uh, there will be a field. Maybe I should just open it to show. No, it doesn't want me to open. Okay, I will show in the web browser. So this is the page where the base version of the don can be downloaded. It can be downloaded for free, but a donation is appreciated. And then there is the link for the premium version with textures. As already mentioned, the whole source code is hosted on GitHub. Uh, there are two repositories for the add-on, and they have the same version of the add-on source code. So the first one here host the documentation and it's also the place where users can post the issues but the actual development happens in the repository repository architecture blossom eventually the, the, the documentation will be also moved to this repository and also the links to our social networks it's twitter.com architecture and Facebook.com architecture. Thank you for attention. So we've got some good time for some questions here. Who has got a question? Thank you very much, Renoui. My son came in and was watching a little bit, and he was wondering if there's any communication in the other direction from Blender to OpenStreetMaps? Uh, it's not a trivial task to create an editor. No. So the attributes that you have in your add-in, they are, they are a large extension to the small number of attributes uh, built into OpenStreetMaps, is that? Is that understood correctly? Uh, the opposite map provides only basic attributes and it's not enough to generate a realistic building. That's why we introduced um, a language, a textual language to describe a building style called architecture markup language. I can't hear you. Be honest. Oh, sorry. Just one question as we're talking about the markup language that I was wondering, uh, is there uh, some documentation, let's say that, uh, because I saw that there was some, uh, I don't know, 19th century window two by two. So is there uh, some documentation that's, that shows, let's say, what are the keywords that are uh, allowed or? 
Uh, the idea is to have some basic classes defined in the standard asset package. And the user can define his or her own classes and reference the classes in the markup language. Okay, so let's say that, okay, I understand. There has to be, let's say, so the, 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 the associated class, let's say, that comes with uh, what you are defining. Yes, so there is an asset package editor. It allows us to set in textures and later we will add setting custom 3D models for windows, for balconies, for other elements, for doors, and so on. And the user can set a class for this element, uh, texture for this asset, uh, either for a texture or for 3D model, and reference this class in the markup language. That's the idea. Okay, it's clear, thank you. So Vladimir, what sort of commercial, uh, what sort of projects do you know about that are, that are building on top of the, the features that your add-on provides? And not just software projects, but also um, animation projects and, and modeling projects. I know that the add-on was used to create commercial commercials uh, there was an uh, article in Financial Times. I'm not sure what it's, was it New York Times. I'm not sure. No, I think it's Financial Times about the docks in London. And there also of this art, of this article used my don to generate illustrations for this article. That sounds great. So are there are there other similar projects out there doing similar things or is, is what um, Blender OSM is doing at, at quite a more advanced level than many of the other solutions? Uh, probably you know there another don for Blender called Blender GIS. It also is capable to import OpenStreetMap data, but not that in, not in that advanced way as Blender Austin does. So your one focuses and extends a lot more what you can do with the graphics, is that right? I'm just guessing that something that's called GIST would be more interested in just the basic geometry. In addition to OpenStreetMap, and the Blender JS can import shape files. It can import um, terrain files. Okay. So, Michael, everything seems to be working now. Go ahead. What would you like to say? Okay. Hello. Uh, I'm I'm an architecture student from Poland, and uh, I was thinking <coughs> about the. OpenStreetMap uh, data uh, data licensing because it's uh, quite confusing to me. Uh, now I'm making student student projects, so I don't need to worry. But uh, in the future, uh, can I? I don't know if this is a good question for here, but can I use the OpenStreetMap data um, for commercial project like? Um, architectural visualization because this is the uh, creative commons share alike license uh, the the open street map data is on share alike license which means that you should share uh, everything your work that you make with the open street map data you should share in the same way in the open source uh, so the question is can i make a commercial project a visualizations that i sell uh, to somebody that contains the OpenStreetMap data? Yes, and I'd like to make a correction. The OpenStreetMap open data are distributed under so-called ODBL license. 
ODPL. It's close to uh, shared alike license. And the only requirement is to provide an attribution. If you don't edit the data, if you just use it, the only requirement is to make an appropriate attribution. Mm -hmm. If you edit data, then we should release the edited data with the same license as the, as the original data. So again, if you just use the data, the only requirement is to provide an attribution in appropriate way. Mm -hmm. So if I only use so yes, you can use it in your, in your yes, you can use it uh, the opposite map data in the commercial projects provided that you have an attribution. So I should you can search a, a note that the data comes from the open street map and then it's like proper attribution. Uh, there is a an article. I'm just putting a, map. a link to their information in the in the chat there. Mm -hmm. If I want to read that while we uh... yeah, there's a, an article on opposite map wiki uh, website about attribution. So it and they try to describe all cases like if you are using opposite map in video in the for in the, for in the, if you're using opposite map on paper. And so on. Mm -hmm. and describe how to attribute it for each case. I've dropped in a link for that. Article. Opposite map. Yes, exactly, exactly. I, I meant this link. Okay, I will read this. The attribution guideline for opposite map. Yes, exactly this link. Mm -hmm. Licensing is complicated. Yes, it is, and it always also I don't really understand how to interpret this, how to understand this uh, that you said um, in the case whether I edit the data or not. Like when I import uh, the outlines, the footprints from OpenStreetMap to Blender and then build some more geometry upon that, then I actually edited the data. So that's all. No, you different. didn't. If you edit the original data, like okay. add, if you add more, if you provide more attributes for the data, if you edit the footprints, if you add new footprints and so on. I see. I see. Okay. Could I ask a, a, a very similar question? If, if I use your Adam to import some geometry to Blender, uh -huh. and I need to for an architectural project, I need to demolish a row of buildings to add my new building in. Is, is that editing OpenStreetMaps data? No. I think it's no. I guess I'll have to read the article as well. I'm wondering if you'd like to tell us something about how your, how your model is generating income from this add-on, uh, how you arrived, how you arrived at the way that you're doing it and how that works for you. Well, as I already said, uh, there is a premier version that contains textures and um, simple building styles in the PMI language. And I'm selling this premium, premium version. Also, it's possible to provide, uh, to give the nation for the base version, as I showed it during my presentation. Uh, it's possible to add a zero in the price field, but it's possible to enter some amount greater than zero. But the majority of the income comes from sales of the premium version. And is that enough to pay for the time you spend on it or how much of, of your time is, is covered or, and how much of your time is just donated to the project? Uh, the whole of my time is donated to the project and uh, I think it's enough for me to continue to do the work. 
So you're in a, a reasonably exclusive club of um, independent developers of open source software who can pay their bills with it. It's pretty good. So, uh, um, I'd like to tell a few words how I'm going to continue. Uh, I mentioned that the recent feature added to the add-on was Asset Package Editor. So it allows setting custom textures. Later, it will be possible to add custom models for, like for Windows, for custom 3D models for Windows, doors, and so on. So my idea is to prepare asset packages for specific uh, districts, for specific cities, and to sell them. So with textures that, that fit the style and the period of certain cities and certain time periods. Yes, okay. exactly. Yes. I think V has a question. Go ahead. Hi, can you hear me, Victor here? Yeah, I yes. think it's fine, Victor. Yes. Hey, thank you for the talk. Uh, I was wondering, like, is this mostly focused on, well, on architecture? Or is it also like, I saw a bit of landscape there. Is it also taking, you said it's using SRTM data for landscape? Yes, it's using SRTM data for the terrain. Mm. And so could I also, like you said, uh, we can use the uh, PML markup language uh, to define architectural features. Could we also use this like to define models for like trees? So we could sprout some trees on the landscape and then basically evolve this in more of landscape generation. Yes. The, PM, the PML itself is a quite generic language and it can describe uh, different entities. There is no fixed items like facade or roof. It will pass any element described uh, in the PML. So theoretically, yes. But then we need to uh, describe. When the, we need to, we need to think how to describe landscape elements. Because my intention was to describe buildings. Later, I'm going to spend significant time to describe streets. But I haven't thought about describing landscape. So I guess there's like... I the think language you, is... Sorry. And the language is itself is capable of describing any entities. Because it's independent, it's there is no pre-built items, so it can be used also describing quite generic features. Hmm. I guess did you? So if you have an idea how to describe a landscape items, then I guess we can discuss it. There might be a collaboration coming. Yeah. Yeah, have a talk about it. Um, did you get uh, Did you get the answer, the information you needed for now, Victor? Thank you. Yes. Uh, well, I guess one question came up there is, if, did I understand correctly that so like on one side you're defining the features or you want to have there like with the PML, but also on the other side there got to be some classes written for the. Uh, like modules in your plugin or whatever it's called uh, that then generate like uh, the streets or the trees as the features. In general, the classes are user defined. This is user defined space. Uh -huh. Okay. Hey, Michael has another question. And uh, if anybody else has a question, now is the time to say so, because we'll probably want to wrap up soon. Michael, go ahead. Uh, OK. So I just saw um, the link that you posted to GitHub uh, to this BPI polyscale tool, which creates, uh, which generates heap roofs from given yes. outlines. 
Um, I have to say I'm very happy that I joined this meeting because I actually have been uh, searching for such a tool for some time. And uh, so I opened the, the GitHub uh, wiki and I'm reading this uh, about this skeletonize um, algorithm. And I don't really know how to use it. Um, I, I think it's not just a, a button, but it's uh, like based on Python console, which I'm not very familiar with. I'm not a coding person. I cannot code. And um, could you um, could you tell? Could you like uh, shortly explain how I can how you can use it? How how I can define the the polygons? Maybe a very maybe a very short explanation, and if you can then also tell us, uh, Vladimir, what's the best way of getting in touch with you and continuing the conversation? Any possible way mentioned in the GitHub page. It's a Twitter, Facebook, also there's an email. I don't know if you can give uh, Michael a short answer to his question or, or not. Are you going to try? Okay, I will give you. I will give you the answer. So, unfortunately, this is a Python library. So, just for to use it in other programming project. So, it wasn't designed to use to use it in the, like with the graphical user interface, but it's used by the render awesome and want to generate heap truths. So. If you have a heap roof, you can draw a heap roof in the OpenStreetMap file and then open this footprint with the heap roof using the Blender Awesome add on. So, again, first draw it in the desktop OpenStreetMap editor, set tags that specify that this footprint has a Proof. It's a building, and then import it with the Blender Awesome add-on. Here's the ring, and there are all possible ways to contact me. Uh, all possible ways, all possible ways to contact me. I just described this ring on GitHub. It's Twitter, email, Facebook. Also, the forum Blender Artist. Okay, I see. I... So, the, the answer to your question, unfortunately, it's a Python library. It's designed for programmers to use it in, a, in your code. Okay. If you want to use it in a user friendly way, then use Blender Awesome add on. Mm -hmm. I see. So, um, I'm out of luck <laughs> because I, I also I, I thought that uh, it might be a tool that um, would generate um, uh, the the heap heap to roofs from any polygon, not only uh, OpenStreetMap data, but like any polygons that I draw. Uh, but yeah, it seems that I'm <laughs> I'm out of luck. Maybe maybe just I can hope that in the future uh, it will be also implemented as just add-on as some use the graphical interface uh, tool because it de definitely I just can't use it um, as, as, as simply as other tools you can always um, you can always talk to some of your other friends at the university who I'm sure would love to teach you Python programming maybe they can teach me as well but also, you're very welcome to go over to the osarch.org um, uh, forum, because if you ask there, uh, a lot of the people will know of different ways of generating uh, roofs from polygons, and they might have a tool that will do exactly what you want. It's certainly a good place to ask, or on the Blender forum, if Blender is the tool that you use. Mm -hmm. There are usually, that's, that is really the sort of problem that lots of people have worked on. So it's just a matter of asking the right people to get the right suggestions. Sure. I think we might be finished for today. Does anyone have um, anything else they'd like to say?
Otherwise, I'll just say thank you very much, Vladimir, for a great presentation so that we could learn all about what you've been up to and what the future has in store. I hope to see some of that data being used so that I can have 3D navigation in my Osmand um, navigation system on my phone, which looks so boring now. So thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, anyone, for attending their meetup. Enjoy the rest of your evening or morning. <laughs> <laughs>